Hello everybody, it's Dawn here from scrapbookingkipsarus.co.uk um, I posted a video on my YouTube channel for this um, mini wallet, a little mini brag book wallet and I've had some interest, particularly from a lady in Australia called Marie who wanted me to do a quick tutorial on how to put the mini brag book together I've made two styles, I've made the one that flaps out and you've got the little flat page here with the little side pockets and then I also made a second one because I like to put big photographs in mine, 6x4 photographs and I adapted it slightly as well to also have the flaps but have the bigger side pockets to take 6x4 photographs and I also incorporated a little pocket there. So this was the one I was going to work on today, just to do you a quick tutorial to show you how to put um, the mini brag book together. You can put it together with any of our kits from um, Scrapbooking Kits or Us, they work quite well with that. But what you need to start with is two sheets of 12x12 12 12 cardstock. Personally I find the basil works better with this and um, the coordination sometimes can split on the the creases when you do the creases and reinforce the folds so I find the basil works particularly well with this project so first of all take your first sheet of 12 by 12 and you're going to need a score pal or a scoreboard um, to do this I tend to work in inches so just bear with me so get that all set up in there what we need to do first is you need to score your first sheet of 12 by 12 at two and a half inches, make a nice score at two and a half inches and at nine and a half inches. And then what I tend to do is to flip it over and do the same on the reverse, purely because I find it helps with the fold lines. See, I've still got my sticker on there, so we'll take that off. Then what you're going to do is to turn your paper one turn. So now your two score lines are horizontal. And now with that set in there, we're then going to score at three and three quarter inches and four inches and eight inches. and eight and a quarter inches. Now you should have a grid that looks like that. Hopefully you can see that okay. Now we're going to reinforce all our score lines. So just bend them over and using your bowling folder, just go ahead and reinforce all your score lines. Same on the inside. These ones can be a little bit tricky because they're quite thin, but reinforcing them does help. So just take the time to do this because it does help when you fold your mini book project together when you've finished. Again, nope. holding that down. So now you should have your first sheet of 12 by 12 looking like that. So you've got all your score lines all reinforced. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the four corner pockets or the four corner squares in this piece of 12 by 12, and I tend to cut just inside the score lines on this. So if you want to go ahead and cut your four squares out or slightly rectangular shape really. So go ahead and cut those. That's one. Yeah. 
this makes a nice little book that can be used as a gift or if you've had a day out and you've got lots of pictures and you want to keep them all together it also works quite well as a little thank you if you've been somewhere to the day to visit somebody and you've taken lots of pictures it's quite nice to make and fill with the pictures that you've taken on the day and pass on to the person as a little thank you rather than just write a little thank you card so I tend to use this one quite a lot actually the style I'm doing today is I'm doing a Christmas one just purely because I've got some Christmas paper left and um, as this lady's requested a uh, tutorial I thought I'd use up the Christmas paper as that was the one that I'd put on the YouTube channel to the little bit out there so then you should have a sheet that looks like this now this is at the stage where I go because I'm doing a more distressed um, looking brag book what I tend to do is I like to distress all my corner edges so I'm using the Distress Ink, the Vintage Photo. The other thing I also like to do that you can also see that I've done on my one is I like to round the edges off. I just think it just makes it look a bit nicer. So with your corner punch, if you just want to go ahead and edge just the four corners at the moment, the big ones, Okay. so they're all edged off and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to distress all the edges of my book on both sides okay so because obviously you're going to see both sides of this so if you want to go ahead and distress both sides of your brag wallet so I'll just go ahead and do this right so you should have all your edges inked now like I've done mine but I've just missed that one there so let me just uh, go ahead and put that piece on that one there uh, the other thing we're going to do at this stage is also with a, a circle punch I'm just going to punch a half moon there ready for a little pocket so if you haven't got one not to worry you could just do a little v-shape or just leave it flat it doesn't really matter but i like to just put a little half circle i'm just judging where it is halfway on here i mean you could be more accurate and measure it but as you can see roughly by eye when it's the halfway point so this is what your wallet will look like for now these bits will slide in and then you have this flap comes up and your flap that comes down okay so now we're going to go ahead and start decorating now I like to start with the front of the book so when I'm looking at it if we just look back at the other one that we've got here you can sort of follow the pattern through so I'm going to use the same piece of paper for this one this is just an 8 by 8 pad okay and I've already measured this all out ready to cut so we're going to go ahead and cut that I'll do that one with you so the best thing is to measure your paper across my one measures because I like to have a little bit of a board around I'm doing this six and three quarters by three and a half but there again with this wallet once you make it you'll probably adapt it yourself and make it to different sizes to fit different situations you know if you want to make a smaller mini for somebody you can do so I've already marked all this up ready for scoring so that's my pieces, pieces cut I'm going to keep this piece and you'll see why later on so I'll leave that piece to one side so this is for the front cover and the first inside cover there again as I've rounded the edges I'm going to round the edges of my paper so that's that piece and then this is this piece here so I'm going to round the edge of that one as well um, I think what I might do is turn this round so when it's folded you've got the the stripes all 
all matching so I'm going to turn that round so I'm actually going to round these corners on here but when you do it with your own paper collection or a paper collection from one of our kits this is the sort of thing that you can be looking at okay so that's for those two pieces before I stick those down there again I like to ink all my edges so we'll do that in a minute so we won't stick anything on just yet the back side piece of this is a bit bigger forget my tape measure we're still going with the six and three quarters but actually it's slightly wider this one's going to be three and three quarters wide and I think I've got a piece here pre-cut ready no it's not that piece it's this piece here that I pre-cut ready so that's going to go on there now I'm not going to round these edges because on the back here I haven't got rounded edges so I'm going to leave those as they are so that's the back bit the inside the outside front cover and the outside bottom cover now the next bits we're going to decorate are the three inside panels now I've cut some paper here that should fit so I think I'm going to go with the the worded one on there and then the piece the strip that we had left I've kept because I'm going to use that as a belly band and just glue the ends of the belly band and then you can slot photos behind there okay and then on the top one here what pattern have I got on the other side of that? I think we might stick to the red actually, I like the red. So we're going to go for the red there. And then there again I've got the corners edged. So get my corner punch again. And I'm going to corner punch that. Now I'm going to make a little pocket on here. This is the extra strip that I had left from the 8x8 paper. But there again I'm going to use that to make a little pocket on the top there so I'm going to keep that there so that's all that and down here we're doing a waterfall and this is how we make the waterfall this is a piece of 8 by 8 which I folded out take the measurements yet again so recheck your measurements all the time I do tend to go a bit over the top with measurements but it's better to be that way so that's six and three quarters by three and a half. So let's just pop this to one side for a moment with all our bits of paper. So that's the six and three quarters, and that's just over the three and a half. So I'm going to cut this down. So what I've done is, again, is I've got a piece of 8x8 eight eight that I've folded in half this time. And then what I'm going to do is to trim that to fit the main paper. And then I'll show you how we make the top flat that's a little bit smaller. So that's your double flap to put your photographs in. But what I want to do is to make this top one a little bit smaller so you can see the interest underneath. So fold out your paper and put it in the paper trimmer and take the slither off. You can just judge it by eye really. There again with your rounder because I've got the edges rounded on my cardstock. Round the edges on both of these. And then when you pop it inside, you've then got your waterfall flap. Okay, so now I've cut all these pieces ready. The other thing I do like to do is to ink all my edges just because it, I think it finishes the album off. So I'm going to go ahead now and ink all the edges of my pattern paper before we go sticking it down. So if you want to go ahead and ink all your edges and then we can make a start then on sticking all the papers down and making the side pockets. So if you want to go and get your edges all inked off 
and I'll see you in a minute and then we'll start sticking everything down. Right, I've gone ahead and inked all the edges of the paper I want to stick down, so we're now going to start sticking the paper down. So if you put your paper, your cardstock on your mat and have it as if this is the outside cover. So I'm remembering now that when I fold this, I wanted to have this stripe at the bottom. So that one goes there and that one goes there. So I'll flip it over. It's worth just double checking yourself if you're not quite sure. Just take that little bit of time because obviously once you've stuck your paper down, you can't then lift it off. I'm just using a wet glue to stick mine down. I've been using this glue for a while now and I really like it. It's, it's quick and easy to do. If you get a bit of glue um, out on your paper where you don't want it, if you let it dry and just rub it, it comes off. So it's really good glue for that. Um, whereas a lot of glues and repositionable tapes tend to leave a mark, but this is really good. So just putting that down. So we'll get these put down quickly. I mean, this album, I must say, is a quick one for a, an afternoon or an evening project. It doesn't take too long to put together at all. You'll find once you've made a couple, you get quite quick at it because you know all the measurements. And also the beauty of it is, I tend to find every time I do an album, I do more slightly differently depending on the paper range that I'm using. And also the beauty of it is you can adapt it and put little extra belly bands and pockets where you want. There again, depending on the project you're doing and the paper line that you're using. So just take a bit of time to reinforce and stick all of those down. And then we're going to flip over. That's the front pocket. So this is the bottom one where we're going to put the double pocket that we made. So that's just going to stick down there. So glue again on that. Beauty of this glue as well is it tends to spread to the edges. So once you've actually got it in place, you've got a little bit of wiggle room and it will always um, just go onto the edges there. So that's quite good for that. So stick that one down. Then we're going to put this one in the middle here and get that one on. It's going to be our middle piece there. So stick that down nicely. And then we're going to stick this one at the top here. I'm going to actually turn it over and stick that the same pattern at the bottom to keep the continuity going with that. So we're going to stick that onto there. So down that one goes. Now, as I said, you were going to add a little belly band with the bit of scrap paper that we had left. Do you remember from the front and back cover? Now, the way I'm going to attach that is to use some very thin double-sided tape and I'm just going to put that on each end of the belly band here. You could use the red extra strong if um, you think the album is going to get a lot of extra wear to it but I do find this one works just as good. So stick that on there and then we're going to take um, this off here now, get it off with my knife. So I sometimes find this easy finger lift for me doesn't always uh, come off as easily as uh, they say. So just that on each end and then I'm going to stick that across the middle and then we've created a little belly band that you can slide tags, photographs or anything behind. I've got an extra strip here that I had from the front cover as well. I want to use that, so I've decided I'm going to make a little pocket to go in this one. So there again, I'm going to mark this off, just there like that. Just trim that end piece off. Put a bit more of the distress ink on that edge, I don't like to have white edges. And then there again, you put the double sided tape around the edge of that so we can make a pocket 
Okay, so we pop that round and again on the ends as well. Okay, so we stick that on those ends there. And then uh, we can just take that off and then we can make a little pocket. So you, there again, you, rather than sticking the photos onto this mat here, we can actually make a pocket and you can slide photos, tags with journaling, you can sort of choose what you'd like to put down on there. So we'll stick that down onto there. There we go. So you've got now got a nice little pocket to slot behind there that you can put tags or journaling. Now the next thing we're going to do is to make the two side flaps that are going to come in. On this book I think I'm going to make the big side flaps like we did in this one. I like these better because you can put 6x4 photographs on these so I think they work better than the little flaps. But I'll give you the measurements, we'll make the big ones today and I'll give you the measurements for the little side flaps. But what you're going to need for the side flaps is two pieces of 12x12 12 12 cardstock and these need to measure 12 by 4 so if you want to get your second sheet of cardstock and cut them at 12 by 4 and then we can go ahead and do the score lines ready to make the side flap so if you want to go ahead and cut your cardstock ready and then we'll make the side flaps right we're going to make the side pockets now so you've got your two pieces that are 12 by 4. So with the 12 inch uh, long piece along the top, you score at 6 and flip it over and score at 6 again. And then what we're going to do is on one end, we're going to get the corner punch and round off that end. And then we're going to reinforce our score line to make the flap and then we're going to ink the edges I've used a dis, um, vintage photo all the way along for this I mean I find even with um, other projects the inked edges just take away the harshness of the edges of the card stock and I just personally think it just gives it a nicer finish to your work. Um, one of the only paper stocks I don't actually use ink on is when I'm using the black. Um, because obviously that just gives a nice crisp edge anyway. But if you go ahead and ink all your edges on this. And on the crease of the fold on both sides. So that's one side done. And we flip it over and we need to do both sides because in this project you're going to actually see both sides of this. So we go ahead and distress both sides and then we're going to cut our paper ready to mat and layer and make our two side flaps. So just on the last crease now that over and do that side and there we go so that's all our paper dis distress and I went ahead and also did the other side so now we're going to put everything together now we need to mat and layer these so there again with your measurements I've already gone ahead and pre-cut the card the paper pattern paper to go on here and these are measuring on mine three and three quarters by five and three quarters. But there again, recheck your measurements just in case your cardstock is slightly of a different um, measurement, not quite 12 inches, or the fact that you perhaps put the score line in the wrong place. It's just worth just double checking that you've done it all properly. So on this, we're going to put two full pieces here. I have to flip mine over because that's going to be the right and that's going to be the left so that's probably the easiest way to show you 
I've already gone ahead and inked all these edges just to save some time really because you don't want to watch me inking lots of edges of paper. So we'll go ahead and stick those down. So if you lay them on your mat, so you've got a rounded end facing towards the right and a rounded end of your cardstock facing towards the left. And then we know we're in the right place then. So we'll stick those two down. So they're going to be the insides of our flaps. Now for the next piece, we don't actually need a full piece because we've got our inside bit that we're going to use the pocket. So being a bit of a frugal crafter, I've, had, I've cut these a bit shorter because we don't need them quite as long. So they're going to go there and there. So there again, I've inked all the edges on those. So we'll go ahead and get those stuck down. I find it's easier to work like this rather than trying to lay it all out on the desk and you've got bits flapping about all over the place. So, but everybody's to their own and you can work out which way suits you the best, really. So, stick that down there. That's it. That's the beauty of this glue, is you've got a little bit of wiggle room. So, burnish that light down. And then what we're going to do is then we're going to flip these over and flip that one over. And then with that, I'm going to put that piece on that end. So this is the square ends. I'll put a different piece of pattern paper. And then with the rounded ends, I've got my music note paper again. But there again, this is personal choice and it's entirely up to you you know, you'll make this your brag wallet for you, so, you know, you can choose how you want to do it. So there again, we get these glued on, and then we can actually attach them to our main mini brag wallet. So we'll stick those on there, stick this second one down on this side, get that all stuck down. It's a quite a quick wallet to put together, sort of project you can do of an afternoon or of an evening. I often sit in front of the telly when the family's watching telly of an evening and make them up then because I find I sit in front of telly doing nothing and I'm thinking all the things I could be doing. So perfect project to do in front of the telly. So uh, as I say, I think once you start making one or two, you'll get addicted and want to make even more. So that's both of those done. That moved over a bit too much. So we've got one side done and the other side done. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and attach these to our book. So here's our book. We've got the top pocket and your belly band. So we'll go ahead first and we'll attach this right hand side. Now if you remember, we put a half moon here. And there again, this is where I've adapted the book slightly again. I thought, why well, just cover that up? Why not use it as a, a pocket? Why am I wasting that piece of piece of paper there? So I'm going to make this into a, a pocket there. So there again, getting some tape for this so we can make it actually into a pocket. The red double-sided tape will probably be best for this. Um, or you could use wet glue but by using the thinner type it means you can get more in your little pockets whereas if you use sort of quarter of an inch tape you're not getting so much room to put photographs and you know journaling tags in so that's why I tend to use the thinner tape but the red tape would probably be better for this so I take that off there and that off there going to line these up. Just take a bit of time just to line them up. Let me turn this around that way. It might be easier for me to, to see what I'm doing. 
I'm not going right up to the fold line, I'm giving a little bit of leeway just so purely when you fold the flap in you've not got all the bulky end on one side. So that's what your flap would look like, so that can fold in and that gives you your little pocket. So just get the score tool, just burnish those edges where you've taped. You see they can then take photographs or tags. What I've then also done is I've cut some more pattern paper. Rather than trying to cut the paper and trying to get around this circle, I've just used some trimmings off what we had left from this pattern paper that we had on the other side. Just used the strip that we trimmed off the edge and I'm just going to stick that on there. I've inked around the edges already. So I'm just going to stick that on there to give it a bit of a decorative edge. And the craft um, cardstock does go very well with this um, paper line pattern that I'm using. So that goes on there. That's one side done. So we'll just go ahead and do the other side. I'll do it again there with you. So fold that over. And put your double sided tape there. And on there. And then down the edge of that one there. Press them down firmly so I can get the back off them. It came off a bit easier. This one's not going to be so easy. There we go. Right, last piece. So we're going to line that up. Don't take it right to the edge, just slightly off the edge there. Oh, I'm not happy with how that went on. There we go. Put that down there. open, get our bone folder and just burnish those edges, double sided tape onto the ribbon piece, I match that up so that looks the same, move that over a little bit, there we go. And then I'll just go around a tidy here where we haven't got a good stick. So, there we go. There's your mini brag wallet. All made up and finished and ready to go. So all you've got to do now is to finish the little bits inside. You can add any decorative embellishments if you want to. You can add a magnet if you'd like to hold it still, but as you can see, it does fold flat quite nicely. So unless you've got masses of pictures inside, you wouldn't actually need to hold that down. So as I say, you've got room in here, for photographs or um, tags that you could make. You've got your double flap down here. Move that up a bit. Your double flap here for your extra photographs. Put your six before photographs here and also on the back here and on the inside and then you've got a pocket there you could use for tags memorabilia more photographs that's the same the other side and then you've got a little belly band here you could slot there again memorabilia lots of photographs whatever you'd like but it all folds up nice and neatly and there's your mini brag style wallet folder. So I hope you've enjoyed making it and you've enjoyed the tutorial. I'd love to know your feedback um, if you'd like to leave any comments at the end and if you do get around to making one in the paper range that you'd like I'd love to see some images of it. You can always post them on our Facebook page. I'll leave a link to that down the bottom of the video um, but I'd love to hear the feedback on it. If there's any other ways I could um, 
modify the tutorial at all it's it's something new I've been doing so I'd love to know your comments so you can get in touch with us through Facebook and I'll leave the link at the bottom of the page or you can log on to our website at www.scrapbookingkitsarus.co.uk My name's Dawn, it's been great to do this tutorial